Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Dhyasya Yato Dvayat Itaratas Charte Suavigyaswarat Janma Dhyasya Yatam Vajar Itaratas Charte Suavigyaswarat Kine Brahma Hidaya Adhikabaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hidaya Adhikabaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Varimidam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisago Mesha Tejo Varimidam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisago Mesha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality of God O all pervading personality of God For my respectful basis is unto you Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute and the truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations. Presentation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitra bhutra. Dharma projita kaitra bhutra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapo trayon mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Purer Ishwaraha. Kim Vapari Rishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in their heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of that scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Shmar Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatarur galitam palam. Nigama kalpatarur galitam palam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyatam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for including all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swak. 
Svakata Krishna Srimvantam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiryan Taksto Hi Abhadrani Hiryan Taksto Hi Abhadrani Vidu Noti Srihit Satam Vidu Noti Surit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly from Bhagavad Gita Is itself righteous activity It is self righteous activity. And from one who hears about Krishna. And from one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as the best wishing friend. And purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhaktir bhavati naistiki. Bhaktir bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, his devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Tadarajas Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Chaita etar navidam. Chaita etar navidam. Sitvam satve prasiditi. Sitvam satve prasiditi. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of of, of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogata. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When all these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate is remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Shiyante chasya karmani. Shiyante chasya karmani. Drusta evatmanishwari. Drusta evatmanishwari. Thus Bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard note of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. And enables us to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna, or from his devotee, from his devotee, in Krishna consciousness, in Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Seventeen, Verse Number Four. Four. What happened to my... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Prapracharatam Aruda Prapracharatam Aruda Kartasvara Parichadam Kartasvara Parichadam Mega Gambi Rayavacha, Mega Gambi Rayavacha, Samaro Pita Karmukaha, Samaro Pita Karmukaha. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Prikshit, well equipped with arrows and bow, and seated on a gold embossed chariot, spoke to him, the Sudra, with a deep voice sounding like the Thunder. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Mr. Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vinata Swami Srila Prabhupada. An administrative head or king like Maharaj Parikshit, with full majestic authority, well equipped with weapons to chastise miscreants, can challenge the agents of the age of Kali. Then only will it be possible to counteract the degraded age 
And in the absence of such strong executive heads, there is always disruption of tranquility. The, elect, the elected show bottle executive head as representative of a degraded public cannot be equal to the, with a strong king like Maharaj Pariksit. The dress or style of royal order does not count. It is one's actions which are counted. Or as they say in English, actions speak louder than words. So in this case, we see that weapons sometimes are necessary, and especially in the hands of a bona fide Rajarasi or king who is a devotee and is in complete control of his mind and senses. So he does not whimsically use violence, but he su uh, uh, surgically uses violence. Just like the knife in the hand of a thief is not the same as the knife in the hand of a, uh, of a surgeon. Uh, the doctor who's going to commit, uh, uh, who's going to perform surgery also cuts the flesh of a human being, but in order to heal them, hopefully, and, but the thief cuts a human being uh, and uh, commits violence. So there's a difference. And the same way, a, a saintly king will only use violence surgically to get rid of diseased, mean, nasty, and uh, uh, people who are uh, abusing others unnecessarily, whether it's animals or human beings. So without such leadership, society falls into disarray, which is what we're seeing today because uh, in, in the United States, of course, we don't have a king. We have a representative government and with a lot of checks and balances and also uh, with different layers, hierarchical layers. So a governor of a state actually has a lot of latitude to make decisions, uh, even uh, though the President of the United States might want something, uh, a governor can do something different and without breaking the law. Uh, so we see uh, that uh, the United States uh, uh, with, with a representative government does not have a overarching strong, uh, you know, let's say uh, ultimate ruler. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, there's not much difference between his uh, authority with other countries and his authority with the different states in the United States because uh, uh, he's not an absolute authority. <laughs> no matter which party uh, puts in a president, still the powers of the president are limited. That's the whole idea of the Constitution of the United States. It limits the powers of government and the three sections of the government, the uh, uh, judicial state, the, the, ju the judicial uh, part, the executive part, and the legislative part. So we don't have the type of government that was present 5,000 years ago under Maharaj Brikshit and Maharaj Yudhisthira and going back even to the time of Lord Ramachandra because we don't have saintly kings or saintly people that are uh, leading the government. We have usually corrupt people that are leading, leading the government uh, and uh, they don't understand what are the laws of nature. They make laws themselves or, or actually the, the Congress and the Senate make laws and then the executive branch is supposed to make sure those laws are followed, and when there's a breach of following, you have the judicial uh, the section that can correct, supposed to, supposed to correct errors in following the laws uh, made by the uh, Congress and the Senate. And 
the laws that are guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. But there are many uh, shortcomings. And the, the major shortcoming is that you don't have saintly people who are politicians. You usually have rogues and rascals that become politicians. And they're voted in by other rogues and rascals. Uh, and there's no real understanding of what is Dharma. So uh, this principle of Dharma, Dharma to Shakshat Bhagavat Pranitam, only Krishna can enunciate what is the path of Dharma. And uh, today, people don't listen to what Krishna says. They don't even listen to what the Bible says. They don't even listen to what the Quran says, uh, although they claim to be following these things. And because of that, there's a lot of turmoil in society. So the administrative head or king, like Maharaj Pariksit, with full majestic authority, well equipped with weapons to chastise miscreants, can challenge the agents of the age of Kali. So when Lord Ramachandra was going to an, an exile and he was taking his wife, uh, the, his wife protested that he should not take the weapons with him. And her point was that if you take the weapons with you, you're going to use them. And she gave one of the, the best, uh, let's say, uh, justifications for pacification, for not, for, for not using weapons. And so did, the question is, did Ramachandra listen to his wife? No, he didn't listen to her. He took his weapons with him because they were necessary for protecting her and protecting uh, others. So uh, it's not just like today, there's a big uh, debate about you know, well, there's so much violence in America. Let's get rid of the guns. So they got rid of the guns in England, but the violence hasn't debated, uh, abated because in England they use knives now. Right? <laughs> so maybe they should get rid of the knives. Right? <laughs> then they'll use forks. So maybe they should get rid of the forks. And then they'll just use brute force with a hammer or something else. You know, if you look at the Vikings, they had these uh, terrible weapons, but they look like hammers, you know. So it's, there's no, you know, it's, it's not the hammer, it's not the gun, it's not the knife, it's the person using it. And those persons using those type of weapons to hurt others are people who have not been educated properly. So if you're going to correct society, you have to correct its education. Today, there's no education. People are taught ignorance in the name of education. And because of that, uh, new generations come up that have not been trained at all how to be a civilized human being. Civilized, civilization begins with the Varnashram Dharma system for scientific organization of society. And when it's not followed, there's chaos in the society. And because the Varnashram system gives rules and regulations to identify the educational and cultural level of people. So there's, there are rules and regulations by which a sannyasi is recognized, by which a uh, kshatriya is recognized. I mean, uh, okay, so the sannyasis, there's vanaprastas, there are grihastas and there are brahmacharis. And then there are sudras and there are vaishas and there are kshatriyas and there are brahmanas. So each one of those orders, either social order or ashrama order, are identified by their qualities and their work. You don't have that today. And, and each one of those classes are taught to function in a certain way. They're educated to function properly in their, in their position. And when it, when it works properly, everybody makes spiritual advancement. Now, anything that looks, has the appearance of being un, uh, un let's say, unfair or unequal uh, is eliminated by the ashrama system. The ashrama system is a movement upwards. The uh, varna system 
is a, is a movement for cooperation, where people cooperate with each other for the common good. The movement upward, the progressive movement upward, is, uh, is in terms of culture. Uh, so you can start as a brahmachari and end up as a sannyasi. The sannyasis are considered the leaders of society. They lead not by dictate, but they live, lead by example. And their example of, of uh, purity and complete uh, renunciation is necessary. And the Brahmanas also are, are leaders of society, but they don't lead by dictate again. They lead by their example of uh, dedication to uh, teaching others how to behave properly and teaching the culture of uh, Sanatan Dharma. So, this is the ideal social organization where everybody makes progress uh, to become eventually pure devotees. But we don't have that today. And, and Prabhupada, near the end of his pastimes on the earth, he said, now I've only done 50%. The other 50% has to be done, and that's Varnasran Dharma. And everyone went, duh. Dharma. I thought there was something wrong with that, right? Because Lord Chaitanya uh, did not accept different things that uh, Ramananda Roy said. Uh, and actually, he wasn't really rejecting the Varnashram Dharma system. He was rejecting uh, that in Kali Yuga, one cannot really follow it strictly, but there is uh, the Daiva Varnashram system that people can follow. And that is what we see in the temple. Everything in the temple is Krishna-centered, Radha Krishna-centered, right? So everybody comes to the temple. There are all kinds of people. There, some people are following Krishna consciousness, and most people are not following. But when they come to the temple, they see an example of God-centered Varnasram. So I'm basically like a Sudra or a Vaisha and by, by work, right? But I can be engaged as a, a brahmachari or a grihasta or vanaprastha or a sannyasi, right? Even though my tendency to work is in one way, uh, as long as I'm God-centered, I'm, I'm, I'm offering the result to Krishna, I make spiritual progress. See? And somebody else can be a very erudite uh, you know, pundit and, and know Sanskrit and quote so many verses and explain so much, so many things from different shastras and so forth. So we can all cooperate with each other based on minimum chanting of 16 good rounds and strictly following the regulative principles. This is Dar Varnashram, this is Daiva Varnashram, God-centered Varnashram. So our mantra is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And whatever we earn or, or do, we offer the result to Krishna. And it's purified in that way. So if we stop offering everything, we, we say, well, I'll just give, you know, like a 1% to Krishna, 99% I keep from my griha. Well, then then we become affected by the modes of material nature. So how can you give everything to Krishna? Well, you learn to use everything in Krishna's service. That's, it doesn't mean that people are, you know, just like you go to a dentist and he pulls your tooth out, right? And it's very painful. So it doesn't mean someone comes to your house and says, give me all your money, or otherwise you're a karmi. No, that's not the point. Uh, we use everything. We, we, we center our whole life around serving Krishna and regularly associating in the temple with devotees. And naturally, we uh, support the activities of the temple. And then our, our house also becomes a temple. And we use everything in the house also for spreading Krishna consciousness. So that's not a difficult thing to do. It's actually much more fun and pleasurable than being selfish and holding back. So this is an art. It's called the art of work, yoga koshalam. And this is what Krishna is teaching Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. And this is what Prabhupada has established in, in ISKCON, this Daiva Varnashram system. 
Now, to establish this in society, it's not difficult. Actually, if the temple atmosphere is full of bliss, it's not difficult to spread the movement. So the whole point is, are the devotees blissful? Are they actually happy chanting and doing service? If they are, then it becomes like an infection. Like it's more powerful than the, the Chinese flu. No, it is. Because happiness is infectious, right? Uh, you don't have to have marijuana, you don't have to have liquor, you don't have to have any of those artificial things to uh, excite the, the happiness in a devotee. The devotee simply, as soon as he hears the kirtan and the, and the, and the mridanga and the cartels, and uh, he joins the happiness, right? Whether it's on Sankirtan or whether it's in the temple. So this is the thing. Do we actually feel happy with these things? And, and, and if this is what, uh, and also hearing classes and, and, and participating in classes and giving classes and preaching, if this is what gives us real pleasure in life, then it's easy to spread Krishna consciousness. If it's a struggle to derive happiness from these things, then you will never be able to convince anybody about Krishna consciousness. So, that, so you have to look into yourself to see, are you actually happy with these things, this kirtan, this chanting rounds, this waking up early, this bathing two, three times a day, and and voluntarily supporting the, the temple and using everything in your life in Krishna's service. Does that make you happy, actually? Or is there some hesitation? If the hesitation will hold us back from being successful in, in spreading Krishna consciousness. So we see here that there are different, uh, there are different uh, uh, varnas. And when Maharaj Yudhisthira is equipped with weapons to chastise miscreants, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's what he's supposed to do. When Arjuna is fighting on a battlefield, although it's not a pleasant thing, war is never a pleasant thing. In fact, it's horrible. But he's doing his duty, not for any selfish purpose, but to follow Krishna's instruction. So, uh, you know, nowadays you have this thing, of, oh, guns are terrible. Oh, you know, uh, people are uh, uh, killing others. Well, wait a minute. There's a difference between uh, killing a person who is a criminal and who is threatening to kill others, or killing a person who's an innocent person and, and is, let's say, unarmed and not uh, a threat to others. So this, this whole idea of violence has to be studied. And, and this Prabhupada, right in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he talks about it. He says there's six uh, valid reasons for becoming violent. It's the first chapter, 36 verse. And he says, according to Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors. One, a poison giver. Two, one who sets fire to the house. Three, one who attacks with deadly weapons. Four, one who plunders riches. Five, one who occupies another's land. And six, one who kidnaps a wife, or that can include a child also. Such aggressors are at once to be killed. And no sin is incurred by killing such aggressors. Okay. Such killing of aggressors is quite befitting any ordinary man. But Arjuna was not an ordinary person. He was saintly by character. And therefore, he wanted to deal with them in saintliness. This kind of saintliness, however, is not for a chatriya, although a responsible man in the administration of a state is required to be saintly, he should not be cowardly. That's the condition, that was the condition of Gandhi. He wanted to be saintly, but he was a coward. And what happened? He caused the death of a million people. It's serious. You cannot be a coward and be a leader of, of society or in Chatriya. For example, Lord Rama was so saintly that people even now are anxious to live in the kingdom of Lord Rama, Rama Raja. 
but Lord Narama never showed any cowardice. Ravana was an aggressor against Rama because Ra Ravana kidnapped Rama's wife, Sita. But Lord Rama gave him sufficient lessons, unparalleled in the history of the world. In Arjuna's case, however, one should consider the special type of aggressors, namely his own grandfather, own teacher, friends, sons, grandsons, etc. Because of them, Arjuna thought that he should not take the severe steps necessary against ordinary aggressors. Besides that, saintly persons are advised to forgive. Such injunctions for saintly persons are more important than any political emergency. Arjuna considered that rather than kill his own kinsmen for political reasons, it would be better to forgive them on grounds of religious and saintly behavior. He did not, therefore, consider such killing profitable simply for the matter of temporary bodily happiness. After all, kingdoms and pleasures derived therefrom are not permanent. So why should he risk his life and eternal salvation by killing his own kinsmen? So this is all Arjuna's point of view, right? Prabhupada now says, Arjuna's addressing Krishna as Madhava, or the husband of the goddess fortune, is also significant in this connection. He wanted to point out to Krishna that as husband of the goddess of fortune, he should not induce Arjuna to take up a matter which would ultimately bring about misfortune. Krishna, however, never brings misfortune to anyone to say nothing of his devotees. So, Krishna did not accept Arjuna's point of view, although Arjuna's point of view would be accepted by every liberal today. And also, uh, Sita's point of view would be accepted by every liberal today. Right? But Lord Chandra did not accept it, and Krishna did not accept it. So, that doesn't mean that it's okay for anybody to have a gun and start shooting. No. It's not okay for anybody to have a knife and start uh, cutting. Uh, it has to be surgical. Surgical means it is directed toward a specific purpose that's for the benefit of another person. So uh, the, the benefit of, of killing a person who's kidnapped somebody's wife or trying to burn down their house or trying to give poison to someone, etc., is, is valid. We, we just read the six conditions of six kinds of aggressors, and there is no uh, sin incurred by killing them. Right? So that's being practiced to a sense today, like, uh, but it's in a very, uh, let's say, restricted sense. If you're in your house and someone that you don't know, or even someone that not, you know, comes into the house with the intent of harming you, and you shoot them. It has got to be in the house. It can't be outside of the house. You can't go in the, or into the yard and shoot. You can't run after the person in the street and then shoot them and kill them. But if you're in your house and someone comes in and is threatening you, you can shoot them and not be prosecuted for it and kill them you will not be prosecuted. It happens all the time in the United States. But if it's in the yard or it's in the street, it becomes very, very, uh, let's say, con uh, controversial. And uh, just like this one person went to a protest and he brought his gun and he shot somebody and killed him. Well, that person is being prosecuted now for murder. Right? Even though the people attacked him. Now, he might get off, who knows, but it's very tangential because you can't just carry a gun in public and shoot somebody. Right? Policemen can do it, but even they, if they do it uh, in a unauthorized way, they get prosecuted. And that's happening all the time now. You know? And even if someone in the army, if they, if they kill someone in, in a, by violating the Geneva Convention, which is uh, rules of engagement in war, they can get prosecuted for murder, even though it's in a wartime situation. So uh, one has to have education to understand all these things. Otherwise, uh, people can do anything and think they're justified. So that education is Bhagavad Gita, that we should hear on a regular basis. 
And in the case of Arjuna, his purpose in life as a Chhatri is not to be a saint and forgive everybody. He has an obligation to protect the principles of Dharma and protect people uh, and use weapons of, uh, let's say, destruction in, in uh, specific cases that are permitted. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? And Maharaj, just a little comment. The Prabhupada says that sometimes, you know, people, they think that the sadhus and devotees, they, they, they're cowards, they, they're peaceful, they, they don't get involved in, in the violence. But Prabhupada said, no, actually all the, the great wars in the, in, the, in the scriptures, actually, they fought by the Vaishnavas, the Arjuna, the Ramachandra, say if necessary, the, the sadhus they can be violent. They can, they can, just what you said, basically. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, even Brahmanas. Brahmanas killed Tarashuram, King yeah. Venu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Parashuram. Parashuram also killed many, many, 21 generations of Kshatriyas. Yeah. You know, even but though he was born a, a Brahmana. Yeah. Uh, so we're not, but in general, the Brahmanas are peaceful. Mm. It's only in an extreme situation, and if they're qualified, and if they have the uh, pur purity to do it, uh, so they can get rid of a leader who's completely a rogue. Yeah. Now, in the case of uh, Ma Maharaj Vina, the Brahmin, they, they yeah, the yeah, the Brahmins did it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and after they killed him, they churned his yeah. son from his thigh. And then Prithu Maharaj. Yes, yeah. so that's a great story. And Maharaj is another th point is like, see, the, the, uh, f the, uh, the problem we have in really in this establishing Krishna consciousness, one thing that we should really learn to do it often is a hearing chanting. This is, this, this is it's missing a lot in, in, in our practice. We don't really um, think about it very so much, we take for granted. The hearing chanting is the, 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 all the strength, the spiritual strength that comes from hearing chanting. And no process about hearing chanting. Because you hear the Shastra and it clears up doubts in your mind. And many of these things are going on today in society. People can't figure it out. But mm -hmm. we, just, we just, what we discussed, the sixth type of aggressors, this is a valid thing. It's Shastric, right? And that should help clear a lot of things but then in school people say oh guns are terrible you know only bad people have guns and those those republicans they want to keep their guns and they're bad people they're not bad people if they want to protect their family i mean and if, if someone attacks your house is going to burn it down and you don't have a gun you don't have any way to stop them you're going to feel sorry for yourself because you know uh it was your house right you you didn't go try and bother anyone you didn't do anything against anybody else, but some people are coming and they're going to burn your house down. So what are you going to do? Or someone's choking your wife and you say, oh, I forgive you. And your wife says, what? What do you mean you forgive him? Help me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, you, you have to be able to protect yourself in certain circumstances. Yeah. But we should think about this. Is that the last uh, prayer we sing before Bhagavatam, you, you read it is. It says that the, the very last verse. Well, no, uh, you mean in the. In, in Mangala channel, yeah, before the class. You mean, uh, therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees and Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's the, la the last one, yeah? yeah. No, that, that's not the last line of the verses. Mm -hmm. This is something wrote, Prabhupada wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After. Uh, Shimad Bhagavatam 1, 2, 17, and 21. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he, at, he, he says, therefore, that Srinvatasva Kata Krishna, all those verses we, right we, re, we, we, we recite, mm -hmm. but after that he writes, therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Hearing, that's it. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Today we have our first Goshala Mandir Kalpuja. Mm.
fire sacrifice and kirtan at the farm. By the way, this is something Prabhupada wanted. I'll explain that tomorrow. <laughs> 